Hi friends, this is Faizan Kagdi and welcome to the lecture series of Basic Mechanical Engineering. In our last video session, we have discussed about what is mechanical power and applications of mechanical power and what is prime mover and classification of prime mover. In today's session, we are going to discuss about what is thermodynamic system, then classification of thermodynamic system and properties of thermodynamic system or we would say thermodynamic properties. So now let's begin with our main topic that is thermodynamic system. So we would say that uh, basically first of all we define a system. So what is a system? So a system is a quantity of a matter or a region in space on which various analyses are carried out, on which various studies are performed. For example, a system can be as small as a biological specimen on which we would say a forensic experts perform various experiments. Let's take an example of a tissue or a part of a skin, right? So for detecting various causes, that is what are the causes of disease, right? So in that case, a small piece or a small tissue is a system on which a study is carried out. Similarly, a system can be as large as an airplane. Right, that is various operations can be performed on airplanes, for example, fabrication operations, right, then after uh, some welding operations, spot fitting operations. Uh, so, with respect to that, we can say a thermodynamic system will be the one in which a heat interaction will take place between a system and a surrounding. So, we would say an internal combustion engine in which a heat interaction takes place, right, then after an external combustion engine. In that case, we would say a steam turbine in which a steam possesses heat energy. So, heat interaction between a system and surrounding, there are chances that it could take place. So, all this comes under the category of a thermodynamic system. Okay, so in a diagram on, on your screen, you can see that I have shown an arbitrary uh, system and uh, there is a surrounding. So, what is surrounding? So, we would say a surrounding is a region excluding the system. Okay, or we would say a region except system is called a surrounding. Now we would say that a surrounding and a system are separated by an imaginary envelope that is called a boundary. So we would define boundary as a real or an imaginary envelope which separates the system from surrounding. Now the boundary can be of a two types. The first type is diathermic boundary and a second type is adiabatic boundary. So what happens in a diathermic boundary? So we would say when a system possesses diathermic boundary, then a boundary is going to allow heat transfer between a system and a surrounding. Whereas in an adiabatic boundary, there will be no heat transfer between a system and a surrounding. So this is the most important term which we are going to use in our subsequent chapters. Okay, so you have to keep in mind a diathermic boundary and what is a adiabatic boundary. Okay, now let's see our next topic that is classification of thermodynamic system. So let's begin. The first type of a thermodynamic system is a open system. So what is an open system? You have an idea of an open system, right? You have already studied a basic overview of this type of a system in your 11th and 12th standard. So what we are going to do in this system, so what we are going to study in engineering is that application of these systems on our mechanical components. Okay, for example, IC engine and steam turbine. So we would define an open system is a one in which energy transfer as well as mass transfer across a system boundaries possible. For example, we would say an internal combustion engine which is shown on your screen then after turbine, okay, steam turbine then a simple example that is a cup of a coffee kept open. So in this diagram, as you can see, a reciprocating motion is performed by an internal combustion engine in which if you observe that a air and petrol mixture is entering into a system, it is doing some work and then getting out from a system. Okay, so we would say energy and a mass interaction takes place in this 
system. Similarly, a cup of coffee, you can see the animation of that. That uh, vapor is complete. Com that a vapor is continuously coming out, which indicates the energy transfer and a mass transfer between a system and a surrounding. Okay. So now next type of a system is called closed system. So what is a closed system? So the system in which there is no mass transfer, but there could be an energy or a heat transfer between a system and a surrounding. So the examples of a closed system is a piston and cylinder arrangement. Okay, that is a closed piston cylinder arrangement, then a boiling of water in a closed pan. So as you can see on your screen, I have shown an initial state of a piston cylinder arrangement and a final state of a piston cylinder arrangement. In an initial state, we are supplying heat energy. So because of heat energy, the mass is going to remain constant, but we would say the heat is going to cross the boundary. That is a boundary is a diathermic, which means energy interaction is taking place across the system boundary. Similarly, in a second case, as you can see boiling of water. So it is closed, top portion is closed, which means the energy transfer is taking place, but there is no mass transfer. Now the next type of a system which we need to see is an isolated system. Now, what is isolated system? So, the system in which there is no mass transfer as well as there is no energy transfer across the system boundary, then such system is called a isolated system. Okay, so examples of isolated system are insulated piston cylinder arrangement and a thermos flask. So, on your screen, you can see that I have shown a beaker in which water is filled and a top portion is completely closed and uh, surrounding the system there is a insulation provided that is a boundary is a adiabatic boundary which is not going to allow a energy transfer and a closed portion is not going to allow a mass transfer so this is very simple type of system isolated means we need to isolate a system from a surrounding okay now next topic which we need to see is a thermodynamic properties so let's see the thermodynamic properties okay so in a thermodynamic properties these are of two types the first type is called a intensive property and a second type is called a extensive property so the first question comes in our mind that what is property so we would say a property is a one which defines the characteristic of a system okay that we would say it is a ice Right, a component that is uh, ice is present, then we would say that what is the characteristic of this ice? So we would say that it is at a 0 degree Celsius, right, it, it is at a pressure of 1 bar. So this 1 bar, this 0 degree Celsius, what does this indicate? So we would say this indicates a property, this defines the system. So anything which defines the system is called a property. Now let's see the first type of a property which is called a intensive property. So we would say the property which does not depend on a mass of a system or which is independent of a mass is called a intensive property. Now what comes under intensive property? So we would say the first is temperature, then pressure, viscosity and density. Now how we can say the temperature and pressure does not depend? So let's take a simple example. Uh, for example, I have taken a water in a beaker, okay, and it is kept open to the atmosphere. Now, we know that the surrounding atmospheric pressure is 1 bar, okay. I take a 1 kg water in one beaker and a 2 kg water in another beaker. Then we would say that the atmospheric pressure exerted on both the beakers is going to remain the same, which means irrespective of a mass, that is different mass has been taken, but the pressure exerted on both the beakers are going to remain same that is one bar right which means that it does not depend on a mass of a system so similarly we can apply this concept for a temperature we know the surrounding atmospheric temperature let's say it is at stp condition standard temperature and pressure so it is going to remain 25 degrees celsius either i take a 1 kg water in a beaker or a 2 kg water in a beaker or a 3 kg water in a beaker the temperature is not going to change according to the change in a mass which indicates that temperature is a intensive property Similarly, taking a case of a viscosity, what does the viscosity indicate? So we would say viscosity indicates the thickness of a fluid or we would say it indicates a resistance or a measure of resistance to its flow. 
simple case we can take that I take a petrol in one week of 1 kg petrol okay and I take 2 kg petrol in another week of with a viscosity or a thickness of that fluid is going to change with a change in the mass no which indicates that again a viscosity is a intensive property okay similarly taking a case of a density so we would say that uh, taking an example of water we know the density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube so if whether I take a 1 kg water or 2 kg water or 3 kg water the density that is 1000 kg per meter cube is going to remain the same irrespective for its irrespective for the given mass so we would say that on what parameter density depends so we would say it depends on a heat energy so when we give heat energy to water we know intermolecular distance is going to increase so the density of a water is going to reduce but the density does not depend on a mass of a system so you need to keep this in mind <clears throat> now the next type of a property is a extensive property so we would say the property which depends on a mass of a system is called extensive property so examples are mass itself is a property so first is a mass then second is a volume then we would say internal energy and enthalpy now we know that density is equal to mass upon volume so density is going to remain fixed right for example for water it is going to remain 1000 kg per meter cube now when we change a mass let's say 1 kg 2 kg or 3 kg then correspondingly the volume which depends on a mass is going to change right so volume is which type of property so we could say extensive property similarly we can say that internal energy and enthalpy is also an extensive property okay so in today's session we are keeping up till here in the next session we are we will be discussing about laws of thermodynamic system okay so thank you all